Beforehand, though, it's time for today's perspective. And if you like your um, geopolitics and love the ins and the outs of day-to-day uh, -day diplomacy, well, my guest today is a must. Gérard Arrault is a former French ambassador to Israel, the US and even the UN. Now, he worked for over 15 years at the heart of global diplomacy. More recently, he's turned his ambitions uh, to writing as well. And his latest book translates into English as diplomatic stories, lessons from yesterday for today's world. And it takes events from history and uses them as a way to illustrate the world of diplomacy that he lived in for many years. And he joins us uh, now on the programme. Thanks very much for coming Good and morning. talking to us. Um, let's talk a little bit about your credentials, first of all, if we can, for writing this book. I mean, former ambassador to, uh, to uh, Israel in the mid-2000s, then on to the UN, then on to the US. I mean, I can only imagine how tough it must be, I suppose, to live in that kind of world and deal with the ins and outs of diplomacy on a, on a, on a daily basis and, and the, the toughness that that must entail. Oh, no, it's, it's extremely exciting. You know, really, first, it's exciting to represent your country. And, and it's also exciting, you know, really to face uh, other colleagues, you know, really. And because one of the lessons of the book is that uh, each colleague represents a culture, a different culture. And uh, if you want to be a good diplomat, you have to understand from within uh, the culture, uh, the cognitive sphere of the other side. We can see uh, images, in fact, of you at the UN uh, performing, if a that's the right haircut. world. A different haircut. <laughs> a different haircut. <laughs> but still very much, uh, still fighting, fighting for France and, uh, and for the European Union as well, I'm sure. I mean, let's not forget that during your time, I mean, you saw an awful lot of change. Um, just taking a couple of examples, the election of Donald Trump, Brexit. Mm. Well, actually, yes, and that's, I think, it's also in my book. Uh, the, the fundamental idea is that after 1945, we went through the Cold War where you had two superpowers uh, which were, in a sense, managing the world. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, you had the, the, the triumph of the West, actually the American moment where the U.S. were the only superpower, and it's over. It's over because the, the American uh, policeman or American gendarme uh, is tired and is going back home the way we saw it in Kabul. You know, well, in Kabul, what was also interesting in August 2021, when, when President Biden said, uh, now the U.S. will intervene only when its vital interests are, are at stake. Mm -hmm. And you have other powers emerging or re-emerging, like China, Russia, India, and, and all these countries are telling us, the West, you know, really, uh, your domination of the world is over. And we are back to power politics the way we, we knew them in the 19th century, uh, but to the dimension of the world. And in the book, you use, um, don't you, kind of uh, historical um, points in history, for example, the war, the Spanish secession, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, to question the best way to end the war, Brexit to illustrate the art of treaty mating. It's the way of sort of looking back in history and then linking that to, to ways and, and skills, I suppose, that you use in diplomacy. I think, you know, really, basically, we are back to diplomacy, to uh, international relations, the way, uh, actually, the international relations were conducted for the last 2,000 years. Uh, we, we have to understand that the, the European, Europe the, that we know, we have been knowing since 1945 was an exception. Uh, it was an exception. War was totally impossible on the European continent, but the civil war in Yugoslavia, and we were under the protection of the U.S. So you're, the Europeans, in a sense, we were, we could think that international law and international aid and a compromise and a negotiation, you know, were enough. That, that was uh, uh, modern diplomacy. No, Mo diplomacy is not modern. We are back to the, the way diplomacy has been conducted for 2,000 years. And of course, uh, events in Ukraine have kind of tipped everything on their head once again, haven't they? Exactly, and, and I do think that, unfortunately, uh, the war in Ukraine is not one a crazy exception. Uh, it's maybe the announcement of what we are going to face in the coming decades. And, you know, in the conclusion of my book, I say that the Europeans have to rearm themselves. And when I'm thinking in, uh, of rearming, it's not only uh, acquiring weapons, it's not only being ready to war, but really but really ready to face this world, which is a tough world, a world where only power matters and where the Europeans should be the only herbivores in the world of carnivores. Sounds a bit depressing. Yes, it's, it's depressing. 
uh, we are, uh, in a sense, we are realizing how happy we have been mm. uh, since 1945. Very often we were complaining about uh, the heaviness, uh, the, the, the lack of tact of our American uh, uh, godfathers. Uh, but I think that now we are going to realize how happy we was uh, this period. You're being quite direct in what you're saying in the book and what you're saying to me here. Being a diplomat, um, you have to be diplomatic, presumably. And you, there were times, weren't there, where you've been criticised for saying things that perhaps people thought you shouldn't have said. How difficult is it to try to get the line right? Well, the problem is now, of course, it's, it's a, a, I'm going to say a platitude. The problem is how to manage the social media. And in the social media, you know, you exist only if you are creating the buzz. Mm. Uh, if I had been, uh, I, I was asked by my authorities to go to Twitter, to Instagram, and, but if I had gone there and say, you know, France is in favor of peace, really, I would have had 15 followers. Mm. So the problem of social media is to find the right balance. For a diplomat, it's quite difficult, because usually a diplomat, you know, you don't hear about him. It's, it's a, he's a good diplomat, and now it's a bit different. But of course, you can't... Um, have a presence on social media in the US the same way that you are in China. What I did was in the US because it was possible to do it in the US. In China, I would have advertised the castle of Versailles, period. And just on a personal note, I mean, you've now turned to, to writing. It's your third book, I think, isn't it? Yes. Could, 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 be other, could be others, but I know there's been at least three. Um, how did that come about? Is that something you've always wanted to do, to turn from uh, diplomacy to, to sort of writing about it? No, for, uh, yeah, two things. First, I love writing, and I, especially I love writing in French. That's really, I, I love my language. And the second thing was also uh, what is striking to a diplomat is the misunderstanding between the citizen and the diplomat. Basically, the diplomat is considered as, as either cynical or useless. And uh, so when I'm writing, I have really this, this notion of trying to explain to the reader, to explain to the citizen uh, why. Uh, why we need diplomats, that the diplomats are living in a different world than the citizens. Well, well, you know, when there is a heavy in our society, you can go to the judge, you can go to the police, uh, to police station. And uh, in the international relations, you don't have a judge, you don't have a, a, a police station. So the, diplomats, the diplomat has to, to talk to the devil. You know, because we are not able to kill Putin, to defeat Putin, so we have to negotiate with Putin. Diplomacy is not to negotiate with the Belgians or Luxembourg. It's mm. to negotiate with Russia, China, all the difficult guys. And it means also reaching compromise with them. Good to have you on the programme today. Thank you very much for coming in and uh, talking to us. Uh, Gérard Arre, though, who is a uh, former French ambassador to uh, Israel, to uh, the US and to the UN as well. Thanks.